For today's Heritage Highlight, I am joined by Dean Black. Dean is the uh, lead of the conveyance shop here at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. Hey, Dean. Hello, Axel. And uh, Dean is in the business of moving air, right, Dean? Why is that? That's correct. Here in the conveyance shop, we maintain all the pneumatic tube systems that move product all over the clinic complex. And when we say we move air, that's what we do. We move millions of square feet of air that occasionally we inject a carrier into to take it from one place to another. Give a brief summary of what the system entails today. Today, we use all of our pneumatic tube systems mostly to move patient samples from where they originate, usually hospitals and the clinical spaces, to the laboratory spaces. Doctors want these results back quickly, and the best, fastest way to get them from A to B is a pneumatic tube system. And that was different, though, decades ago when the system was developed. When did it come to life and for what reason? Mayo has used pneumatic tube systems since day one. When the Plumber Building, where we are today, was built, it incorporated several different pneumatic tube systems to move medical records and x-rays. Paper records, film. Exactly. Back then, Mayo has always been a leader in the medical record even from the very early days. And all of this was paper and films. Every day through the Mayo building, when all there was was paper records, an average day in the tube center was 11,000 histories a day. And you and your team have kept the system going for, for how long have you been here now? I've been here 31 years. Wow, and uh, we can't wait to have, us, have you show us where it's all happening. Will you uh, take us there? Absolutely, it's right down the hall. All right, let's go. All right, Dean, now we are uh, over in the Mayo subway now, and this is the control room for uh, the many systems here. What are, what are we looking at? This is the servers that run the 4x7 tube system. We have redundancy for everything because the system is so important, we can't stay down for any length of time. Sure. So everything has spares and backups. On the other side of the wall, that big gray box mm -hmm. is called the exchanger. So all the carriers that are moving through the system are either inbound to or outbound from the exchanger. So all the pipes from all the buildings come into here, run through the racks, the exchanger carriage down at the bottom, and then are sent out to their final destination on the outbound pipes. And all that's controlled. The, the computers run the system, but there's a lot of mechanical, electrical things that actually control every device out there in the field. How many miles are we talking overall for the, for all these uh, tube networks? The 4x7 system runs 12 miles a pipe. The 6-inch downtown system, which is a lot larger uh, and a lot more stations, we're running 23 miles a pipe on that system. Out at St. Mary's, they have another uh, two four-inch hospital systems. They're well over a dozen miles of pipe out there. And we're looking at some cool footage of, uh, I, you guys sent sort of like a camera with a flashlight through the tube. Uh, tell us, what are, what are we looking at? It, it, it's fascinating how fast this thing moves. Right, so there's some big turbines that move a lot of air. You move a lot of air, you put a carrier in it, instantly accelerated at 28 feet per second, which is about 19 miles an hour. It takes about three minutes and 13 seconds to get from downtown to St. Mary's or St. Mary's to downtown. Back now in your shop, Dean, we have uh, some historic artifacts to uh, look at here. Thanks for digging those out. But first, let's take a look at uh, this thing here. This is uh, what's currently being used, right, as your 4x7 tube line. Correct. And uh, I'm noticing it is oval, not round. Yes. Why is that? An oval tube line prevents carrier rotation. If you have a round carrier moving through round pipe in a long run, like from St. Mary's to downtown, the carrier tends to spin. And if it's full of blood products, that spinning can actually centrifuge the blood and ruin it before it gets to the other end. An oval pipe running an oval carrier is fixed. It cannot rotate, so it cannot harden the samples inside it. So through history, Mayo has used a lot of different tube systems. They used some, everything from little tiny two inch tube systems. We have three and a half inch tube systems. This is an addressable three and a half inch carrier. And what do you mean by addressable? It had rotating copper bands on it that you could set to an address back when pneumatic tube systems weren't selective. They all went to a certain place, a, a, a standard place, and then from there they were sent to wherever they needed to go. So you could address the carrier and the person on the receiving end could see where it needed to go and send it on. And I got to point out, Dean, look at this, look at this good old fashioned leather, leather uh, locking mechanism here. Right. That's amazing. 
still still probably in good shape, right? It is. <laughs> still functional. All right, what else do we have here? So we've got everything from 4-inch carriers, 5-inch carriers. This is what we run today. We run 6-inch round system downtown and then an oval 4x7 system between St. Mary's and downtown. And uh, quick note on this is uh, there's a bit of a padding here that kind of keeps it smooth sailing through the tube? That's a wear band that takes the friction when it's running through the tubes, you don't want to wear out the carrier. Right. So you put in a replaceable wear band, that wears out, you can change that easily and put the carrier back into service. Keeps it quiet too, I would it imagine, does. right? It yes. Excellent. So Dean, uh, you know, it, this, is, this system has been uh, lovingly called the Iron Monster, right? It has. Why has this Iron Monster uh, endured for such a long time, considering you know everything is run through computers, and in in this is run through computers too. But there's electronic file sharing, artificial artificial intelligence. Uh, why is Mayo still relying on this system? There are still tons of pro tons of products every day, mostly patient samples that have to get from where they're generated to the labs. It has to get there quickly, safely, and efficiently, and there's no better way to do that than a pneumatic tube system. And you are heading it up with your team. Dean, that is impressive. Uh, as you said, you are in the business of moving air. Thank you so much for this tour, and uh, we'll get you back to moving air, and uh, hopefully no stiff breezes ahead, right? Nice. Thanks, Axel. <laughs> and thank you for watching.